All right, we're live. Hey everyone, it's Sean with Lara Photography here. I haven't done one of these videos in a while, so I wanted to go ahead and put one together. Um, this is for my uh, fellow wedding photographer or portrait photographer friends and colleagues out there. Um, if you're one of our clients, uh, feel free to tune in as well. You might get a little insight on uh, how we do our editing and uh, how we process photos. So um, really what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be showing you guys um, two shots from a wedding actually last night. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how I edited them and uh, show you the process from start to finish and also talk a little bit about um, the thought process behind the, um, the photo and exactly how we edit them. So this is the first image that we're going to edit. This is actually the uh, final product. Um, so I'm going to kind of show you how we got to this point. Um, so here's the original right here. Uh, there it is. So here's the original straight off the camera. And we'll show you how we uh, edited this. So um, to start, I uh, shot this on a D850 with a 16 to 35 lens. It's a pretty nice wide perspective, um, which we love doing. Uh, we shot this at 1 200th of a second so we could uh, maintain the uh, max power out of our flash units. Um, from the uh, high speed to meet the high speed sync. Actually, on the D850, it's two, it's one two hundred fiftieths of a second. But I just shoot that out of habit because the Z6 I use is two hundredths. Uh, five six to get a little bit of a uh, little bit depth of field and uh, ISO two hundred fifty to reduce noise. Um, so the first thing I do when I want to bring this into Lightroom is I actually have an import preset here on the left. Um, it's one that I've uh, custom made. So I'll go ahead and click that, and this automatically gets applied. Um, but you can kind of see right here on the right hand side where uh, what values are set. And this is just a really good place um, where I like to start when I uh, import my photos and edit them. So um, we're going to go ahead though and start editing this guy. So let's just make the screen a little bit bigger there. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is just bring up the exposure of the entire image a little bit. Great. And then I'm also going to bring up my shadows a little bit more. Awesome. So first things first is I'm just going to crop this a little bit differently here. I'm going to go ahead and just get them a little bit more on the bottom part of the frame just to kind of get some of that rule thirds going. Great. Actually might be a little bit like that. Perfect. Okay. So um, I really like this dehaze tool. I'm going to use this a little bit. This just kind of darkens our blacks and makes the image a little bit clearer. Bring up that exposure tab a bit more, a little bit more in the shadows. Perfect. Um, so one thing I want to do is bring out the color in the sky a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my adjustment brush tool and um, dehaze slider a little bit up to make it a little more punchy, a little more contrasty. Bring up the contrast as well. Also going to bring up the clarity to really make those uh, clouds pop. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of paint over this sky. And if you're not sure where you painted, you can always go to the uh, this tool right here, show selected mask overlay to kind of hit any spots you might you may have missed. Perfect. And then from here, you can make uh, individual adjustments to just the selected area. So as an example, on the extreme, you know, I could go to dehaze all the way up that way. Um, obviously, that's too much, so we're just going to tone it down a little bit. Um, Clarity is a bit high. Just want a little in there. That looks pretty good. I'm going to adjust my white balance of the overall image just to kind of see if it gives me a different feel. Um, so as you can see, it's going a little warmer, a little cooler. And on this image, um, I actually didn't even need to uh, use like a CTO gel to bring out the colors in the sky. It was really that blue, and it was actually really unique. Um, so I, I got really lucky last night. Uh, I'm thinking around 5800 is going to be my sweet spot. I really like those blue tones in the sky. So next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to get rid of some of these highlights on the rock. They're a little distracting to me, so I'm going to go back to my adjustment brush tool again. Reset everything by clicking twice on effect. All right, and we're just going to go ahead and bring down our highlights, bring down our exposure, and then just paint this specific area. I'm just going to go over this rock, go around here, make sure we got the right stuff selected. We do. OK. 
Okay, I'm just gonna bring that down even more. Bring down my highlights all the way. Perfect. That's looking pretty good. Um, the one last thing I have to do, obviously, is get rid of this light stand. You can do it in Lightroom. However, I found that if you do it, if you actually move it into Photoshop, it's significantly easier and you actually just get better results. So we're gonna go ahead and edit this in Adobe Photoshop. We're gonna wait for it to load here. My computer's running a tad slow today for some reason. So um, just bear with me while we go ahead and pull it into Photoshop. There we go. All right, it's on this screen, so we're gonna drag it back over here, not Spotify. There we go. Perfect. All right, so what I like to do is zoom in obviously on this, and I use the uh, spot healing brush tool the majority of the time. It does, Photoshop does a very good job of uh, figuring out you know what you wanna edit. We're just gonna go ahead and decrease our brush Brush size, get rid of this light stand here. This is the uh, Savage Multiflex light stand, which is really good for uh, uneven surfaces like this because you can adjust the individual legs unlike a traditional light stand. And for shooting here in the mountains in Colorado, it is must have. And there we go, that's it. Um, what I would do is uh, hit Command S on a Mac, uh, Control S on a PC and it'll bring it back into Lightroom and get you to your final edit. So my final edit that I showed beforehand was a little bit more blue. I think I actually like I think I like the one I just did a little bit better. But totally a personal preference. So that's how we edited that shot. And I do want to show one more image from yesterday, just a similar lighting technique, just one flash, but a little bit different of a perspective and a different um, angle. So here's the image, and this is unedited. This is straight off the camera to give you an idea of what we're working with. Um, I saw, this is the last shot of the night, actually. I saw this tree and um, really liked the, just kind of how it looked, and I liked this super dark background and gray sky right here. I thought it set for a really moody image, but um, I was a little hot on my flash power. I wanted to, I wish I would have brought a little bit more um, of the ambient light into the image, um, but I was really pressed for time. We were actually just over um, how much time they had given me. Um, so I didn't have too much time to make adjustments, but that's what Lightroom's for. And we can make this really nice. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and apply my import preset. So everything's just a little bit more contrasty. Um, first thing I'm going to do is adjust the overall exposure of the image, bring it up quite a bit. Um, they're a little hot now. I'm just going to bring down the highlights. There we go. Properly balanced. Um, next thing I'm going to do is actually, like I mentioned, every, the, I want to bring up my ambient light a little bit more. So I'm actually going to bring up the shadows pretty much all the way to 100. Um, and that's going to just bring up everything around them. Maybe a little bit less actually. All right, so we're gonna go ahead to our adjustment brush tool now, and uh, we're gonna uh, bring out some more detail in the sky. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the clarity quite a bit. Let's go ahead and adjust the uh, dehaze slider a little bit. Like I mentioned, I really love that tool. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, a little more contrast as well. Bring up the shadows tab a bit more, just a little bit. And we're going to start painting. Cool. Let's see our overlay. Missed a spot right here. Awesome. It's actually looking really good. I'm going to bring up a little bit more shadows and just see what that looks like. Yeah. Perfect. And then I want to bring a little bit more blue out. So I'm actually going to uh, bring down my temp, see how that looks. So that's a little dramatic. So it's kind of go somewhere in the middle there. Perfect. 
Awesome. And then I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. I'm going to zoom in, make sure their skin tones are looking nice, which they are. Maybe just bring down our highlights a tad bit more. Love that. And uh, I didn't mention this, but I did shoot this on the Z6 with the 7200 just to get a little bit more um, compression. Um, the wide shots are super nice in cer certain situations, like the last photo I showed, but here, um, you know, I shot at 70 millimeters just to get that nice compression, make that tree look like it was right next to them, um, and do that. So last step, like before, we'll go ahead and get rid of that light stand. Um, this might be a little little tricky because of that, that little haze around the mag sphere there, um, but we'll go ahead and edit that out pretty easily. And uh, in this photo, I did actually use um, a mag sphere with a mag grid, and I also used a CTB gel, a half CTB. Um, and my intention of doing that was to increase my white balance in camera. So right there, uh, right here, I shot at about 8100, and that was to bring out some of the orange, oranges in this uh, fading light right here. So I did use a CTB uh, gel on this. So same as before, we'll go ahead and just kind of zoom in a little bit on this guy use a spot healing brush tool increase the brush size brush size that's a hard word to say together brush size okay get rid of some of that make it look a little more natural decrease the size get rid of the stand and this is why i love bringing it into photoshop is it's just it's so much quicker and it's so much more effective Command S on that, save that. That'll pull it back into Lightroom. Um, it'll give it spinning wheel of death here. Give it a second. Like I said, my computer is running pretty slow today. And that is the final product. Cool deal. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me at sean at seanlaro.com. And uh, hope you enjoyed this. We're going to go ahead and end the live stream now. Thank you so much, everyone.